The ability to recycle items in Rust is always incredibly important. As they're constantly adding new items to the game, you're obviously going to be filling up your inventory with items that you don't necessarily want. So obviously being able to recycle those items is incredibly helpful. Having the ability to control how fast your recycler actually recycles items is not a new concept. Recycle Manager has been able to do that since the beginning of time. However, having the ability to control what those items actually produce once they're recycled, all within a GUI inside the game, that is new. All of that and more, all with this version of Recycle Manager. What's up everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy where I'm teaching you everything that you need to know about owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel I do plug interviews and tutorials, plus I want to give you all of the tips and tools that are going to make your Rust server ownership so much easier. If you're brand new to my channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on and to get the latest updates on the Rust development world. I'll remind you a couple of times throughout the video to hit that like button if you're enjoying what you're watching, so please remember to do so. Alright, let's get on to today's video. So just recently, the development of Recycle Manager has actually been taken over by White Thunder. And about two months ago, he put out his latest release of it, giving us as server owners a whole lot more control over the recycling that happens on our servers. Now, of course, we've always been able to control how long it takes to recycle an item, but now we can actually have variables involved there that are permissions controlled. So we can have different speeds of recycling that are all controlled by permissions. I'm going to show you all about that once we go in game. We can also use Recycle Manager to prevent certain items from being recycled. We can control how much of an entire stack is going to be recycled each time the recycler goes through its cycle. And of course, we can add multipliers to whatever those items are on the output side of the recycler. All right, so first things first, head on over to umod.org by clicking on the link in the video description down below to download your copy of Recycle Manager. The first thing that we're going to do once we're in game is actually deal with all of the permissions. And then we're going to dive right back into the configuration file for Recycle Manager because there's a couple of things that you might want to change right off the bat. So first things first, let's bring up our admin menu and let's jump into permissions right away. And we're going to do this by group. This is just my test server, so it doesn't really matter. Obviously, you're going to want to determine these things for yourself because like I said before there are different levels that you can assign to different groups such as VIPs or moderators or whatever it is that you want to do. So I'm just going to go into the default group for now and I'm going to have a look at the recycle manager section. All right so obviously we don't want to grant the ability to actually control the plugin itself so we're not going to grant the admin permission right here to the default group. But as you can see here right over my shoulder I have recycle manager speed dot fast associated to the default group. So let's go back to our group. So let's go into the admin section again over to the recycle manager. And as you can see, I have recycle manager dot admin selected for my admin group. And you're going to see why in just a second. So because I have that admin permission granted to myself, when I go up to a recycler, you're going to see this green admin button right here that allows us to actually configure what this recycler is actually going to do. So just as a test, let's put a rock in here and see what happens. So let's click on the admin button right here. And it tells us what the default configuration is going to recycle this rock into, which is five stone. And as you can see here right over my head there, it says default output right here. But let's say we wanted to customize what this rock will actually recycle into when a player puts a rock in the recycler. So let's change this to the custom output right here and let's change the items that are actually going to get recycled out of this. So instead of having five stones, we're going to have 50 stones. We're going to add one scrap. We're also going to add a snowball and we're also going to add the iced AK. So this means based on what you're seeing on my screen right now, every time somebody on this server recycles a rock, they're going to get 50 stone, one scrap, one snowball, as well as one iced AK. Yes, I know, super OP, but I just wanted to show you how extreme you can go with this if you wanted to on your server. So let's click on the green save button right here and we can close down the admin section of it right here and we can actually test this out. So let's have a look at my inventory. Well, I have four rocks in my inventory right now and nothing else. So let's go up to the recycler. Let's dump one of these rocks in there. Let's turn it on right quick and let's see what this recycles into. And as you can see there, just as you would expect, I got 50 stone, one scrap, one snowball, as well as one iced AK. Okay, so let's go back into the admin side of the recycler. As you can see, I set up these recycle parameters using the actual item itself. Therefore, any rock that gets put into this recycler is going to recycle into these four different items. Now, if we only wanted to do this for a specific skin, we can do that too. By selecting this right here to skin, this now makes it so that only this specific skin will recycle into these items. So let's say you wanted to create like a real specific scavenger type looking game. You could put a specific item with a specific skin in your loot table somewhere and then configure this recycle manager to recycle that item into something special, something worthwhile for people to be looking for that one specific skin. 
This of course also makes it so that you have the ability to control items that aren't supposed to be able to be recycled into items that can now be recycled. As you all know, you can't recycle scrap into anything by default. However, we could use Recycle Manager to determine that if somebody recycled scrap that it would turn into another item, obviously. So we can do that just like we did before with that rock. We would change this to custom output and then we would drop the items in here that we want scrap to recycle into if a player decides to try and recycle scrap. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody that would actually try to do that, but you definitely could do it. Let's just say, for example, we wanted to make it so that scrap would recycle into an M249. Please don't do this on your server. You'll completely break your economy. As you can see, I currently don't have an M249 in my inventory. Let's just drop that in there and turn the recycler on right quick. And boom, there you go. Now I have an M249. So there's definitely a lot of capabilities you gain with this latest version of Recycle Manager, but that's not all. We've still got more to go over. Let's go back to the configuration file and I'm going to show you what that's all about. All right, so if we wanted to have different recycling speeds and we wanted to break it up into different groups, this is where we would deal with all of that. So by default, that feature is set to false. So let's start out by changing the enabled to true so that we can go in and start customizing different recycle times. So the default recycle time is set to five seconds. So every five seconds, the recycler is going to go through a cycle and produce output. You can increase that. You can decrease that. You can also set up a recycle time multiplier while the player is in a safe zone. So if the player is at the outpost or something, it could actually take longer than if they were, let's say, at the junkyard. But this is where the configuration file gets fun. So we can actually set up different permissions levels for different groups on our server to determine how quickly the recycler is actually going to function for them. So as you can see here in the default group, I've got it set up to recycle speed fast for my default group. But let's say for my VIPs, I wanted the recycler to be instantaneous. So I go into the VIP section and then I can grant this recycle speed dot instant to my VIPs. All right, so I just wanted to try something real quick there. So I did it off screen. And what I wanted to find out is if we could add different levels of permissions in the configuration file. And if this works, I'll show you how I did it. So let's pull up our admin menu. So let's go into permissions. Let's go into group. Let's go into, I don't care. Let's go into default. And it did work. So what I did is I actually added another permission and I'll show you in just one second, but it did actually show up on my permissions manager, recyclespeed.medium. So all I did there, obviously, I just copied this existing permission as it stands right there and I just posted it down one line from where it was before. And then I changed the name of it and I changed the speed that it was going to recycle at. Save my configuration file, reload the plugin, and then go back in game and pull it up in my admin menu. You guys actually watched me do that in real time. I didn't test it and edit this section out. So if you want to have multiple different levels doing different things, let's say you wanted to punish somebody on your server, you wanted to have a really slow recycler rate, and all you had to do was grant that permission to that specific group or to that specific player, and every time they tried to recycle something, it would take forever to do. And while I'm thinking about that, actually, I don't know why this popped into my head right now, but there is also the recycle plugin, which makes it so that the player can actually use a command and they actually have a recycler wherever they are. Not a physical one like the recycler that you see at the outpost and stuff like that, but it gives them the box and the GUI in order to actually recycle items wherever they are. This functionality of Recycle Manager does also work on that plugin. And now, so instead of telling you about it, I decided I'd show you. So I went ahead and installed the recycle plugin, gave myself the permission to use it. And obviously, as you can see, there's not a recycler anywhere around me. I can use the command instead slash recycle. And just to be clear, this is not part of recycle manager. I'm just showing you that this is actually possible. So let's pull up my recycler. And as you can see, the admin capabilities are still there, just like they were before at an actual physical recycler. So you can do all of this stuff remotely if you decided that you wanted to do that. This, of course, if you have the Recycle plugin as well as Recycle Manager. All right, so that basically sums up Recycle Manager. But before I let you go, if you think this plugin is useful and you might use it on your server, head on over to the UMod page, the one that I listed in the video description down below. And when you get there, you're going to see this donate button right below where you clicked on it to download the actual plugin. This gives us an opportunity where we can actually give back to the developers that do all of this stuff for free for us. So head on over, buy White Thunder a beer or a coffee or whatever it is that he happens to enjoy drinking. It doesn't have to be much. Let's just start showing these developers that we do actually appreciate what they're doing for the community. And I mean, let's face it, if you set up your server properly, your community will actually be paying for this for you. If you want to learn about the plugin that I was using to deal with all of those permissions, that big, beautiful, fancy screen that you saw me clicking on all those buttons, make sure you check out this video on the left-hand side of your screen right now. If you want to support what I'm doing at Rust Admin Academy, you can click on the Patreon button down below me. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you click on that subscribe button that's down there as well. Thank you all so much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you on the next one.